Okay, I'm here with Mike Burrows and we're just looking at a new project that Mike's going on. So do you want to sort of first of all introduce us to what this is? This is, this is uh, currently the Soup Dragon. <laughs> you sort of, we stay away from grandiose names as it were, so I think <laughs> the, the, there'd be somebody that will understand the Soup Dragon or whatever, but basically part of the mould looked a little bit draggedy at one time, and it is green, whatever sort of thing. So, uh, and it's a project with London South Bank University, and this beautiful streamlined shape was down to them and a very large computer. And then the, the, the machining of the, the initial plug is down to a very large CNC routing machine. So there's no sort of, you know, hand guessing or anything. And so yeah. theoretically, this is normally a perfect shape. Little hole in the front there for the, for the air to come in, partly to de-miss the screen. Yep. And also to, to keep the engine going because you sort of, we're planning an hour record attempt with this. Um, but it's a nice project because Glenn, who's done the aerodynamics at college, he and I go way back to the early days of HPVs and we've both built whole machines. So whilst we're working as a partnership, he's doing aerodynamics, I'm doing chassis transmission. We've both done the whole thing. So when he's designing a fairing, he knows what the constraints of my chassis are going to be. He's not going to come up with something that's too small. Yep. Likewise, I'm working on a chassis that bears in mind what, what the aerodynamics roughly are. So when we first sort of got together, th the two bits were pretty close on day one, as it were, sort of thing. So that, that sort of yeah. thing, and now we, we've moved on with it, as it were, sort of thing. It's quite nice. The moulding is done up in Norfolk. This is a straight, it's glass fibre. And this, the colour interesting, this is a little story, it, it is, or at least it's supposed to be, like Brunswick Green, which is not only, I, I did hear some of the first synthetic colour ever produced, sort of thing, it's also the colour of a very famous machine, what was light Brunswick Green, and had famous for speed. I can't remember it. The about Flying it. Scotsman. Yes. Yeah. LNER's colour for their mainline locomotive. The first steam loco to do 100 miles an hour. Now, I'm not saying this is going to do 100 miles an hour, but if we get a very, very good rider, and, yep. and if somebody makes us some rather special tyres, that's the other interesting thing. Tyres on a regular racing bike are not very important because the aerodynamics are so bad. We did this thing with everyone who saw the Guy Martin programme at 30 mile an hour, 90% of a cyclist's problem is aerodynamics, 7% is rolling resistance. This shiny green thing reverses that. At 30 mile an hour, 7% of its problem is aerodynamics, therefore 90%, because the bottom number is always 100, 90% will be rolling resistance at 30 mile an hour. Now, this is designed ultimately maybe for 90 mile an hour, if, if that's the record we're looking to break, whatever, and by then it, it's, it's aerodynamics have come up, and, but you're looking at 30 to 40 percent rolling resistance, you know, slowing up, which is a major factor. But of course the tyres are manufactured not for us, but for the, the world of mainstream cycling. They're not interested in what we need. So putting pressure on tyre manufacturers to get a tyre as good as the shape is, is, is a problem. But, but, and if that problem is ever solved, if we ever get tyres designed just for our purpose, then I'm sure you know, there will be a hundred mile an hour bicycle out there one day sort of thing. That'd yeah. be quite nice. And this is quite radical, you can't see, but if you look up inside, I'm not sure if you'll catch on camera, with it, we, we took earlier shots of the chassis. It's got no gears. Well, it's got one gear. And this comes from my heritage as a fixed wheel time trialist. And realising if you only want to go at one speed, you only really want one gear. Yeah. If you look at the acceleration curve, and the, the, the figure suggests that at half your revs, you're giving 90% of your power. So you're not losing that much halfway down the, the run, as it were, and, and allowing for the fact that the, this transmission is maybe 5% more efficient than a, a crossover derailleur, et cetera, et cetera, which a lot of the machines are using. I'm only 5% down when I'm not, not even looking for, for that much power anyway. You only need, the, we're looking at five miles run up a Battle Mountain. So hopefully this will give us and that very simple transmission has allowed Glenn to come up with this much slimmer, more aerodynamic shape than he would have done if I'd had to pack in derailleur gears and all, all of that nonsense as well, sort of thing. The other natural thing is the size of the wheels. There's nothing natural about the size of a wheel on a bicycle until you get to these, because the determining factor for this shell has to be a person in a seat. Yep and a pair of pedals. If you put a person in a pair of pedals and you, this is the, the smaller shape will go around it, these are the biggest wheels you can get in. These are 650Cs, the one, one size down. If we wanted 700C full-size wheels, the fairing would have to get bigger. So we'd lose that aerodynamically. If we put smaller wheels in, we'd have a lower rolling resistance, but we couldn't make the shell any smaller because of the rider. So it, it's, it's nice sort of organic bit of sort of design there, you're stuck with the 650C, which thankfully you can get reasonable quality tyres for, not, not as good as we'd like, but they're not too bad. Uh, so we're planning, say, to go for a British air record with me, 
then the world air record with a, a proper rider decent strong young rider but who won't have the experience i've got in riding these machines no. but he'll have my my target to aim for uh, and then if that's all successful hopefully over to battle mountain nevada and, and see the gang there and, and see what it will do at six thousand feet altitude on, on a very slight downslope. <laughs> yes <laughs> that would be very interesting to, uh, quite what it's like sitting inside a streamlined bicycle at 90 miles an hour, I'm not sure, it's, like it's <laughs> starting to sound a bit scary, so I'm glad we're going to get another ride. Yeah. Okay, um, so uh, in terms of uh, the mechanics down this end, um, what sort of things would be sort of uh, the challenges you faced? Um, the, the back end is, well, there will be a challenge, it'll be stopping. It's, it's actually got a wonderful hope of sponsoring us with their, their wonderful disc brakes and a massive 230 ventilated downhill disc brake. Unfortunately, it's on the back wheel, which is lightly loaded, and it's a very skinny tyre. So if I, if I had tall pull hard on the brake lever, it'll just lock the back wheel up, skin through the tyre, and blow out. So, <laughs> but we need the heat dissipation. This is, yeah, if it does reach 90 mile an hour, it then has yeah. to stop. You have, so the, the brake lever's been cut down, so I've got a one finger brake lever sort of thing. So the, the stopping was a problem. But because there's no drive at the back, it's quite straightforward. The, the one problem you do have with these machines is the, the wheels stick out a hole in the bottom. Yep. The smaller that hole is, the more aerodynamic the bike is. Your tyre sticking out is bad news or whatever. But of course, the, the shell is relatively flexible. You don't want anything pushing the, the fiberglass fairing onto the side of the very lightweight tyre. So these it's attached either end of the wheel here so that the fairing is tied in as rigidly it can be at that point which hopefully means that the fairing at the bottom won't get deflected onto the and the, the, the better i've done that the smaller that slot can be and there's like yeah. and thankfully the first test run it's had as yet there is no rubbing and nasty noises coming out because from experience of racing just the low races if if you wear through a tire at speed there's a big bang and all your skin comes off down one side now in this case you know i've got a certain amount of protection yes. <laughs> but once the fiberglass is scratched you no longer got laminar airflow so you've got that problem as it were sort of thing it's never going to go fast ever again sort of thing so you've got to be a bit careful but i said the front end was sort of the clever bit with the single sweep but again yeah. nice and simple it, it, it worked on the tricycle it's yeah. worked on the bike the only thing is that, that if you want to grab that black thing over there and hold it up to the camera what set it's set up now for the hour record attempt on is the little, little ring one? that's it that's the big ring <laughs> that's, wow. a, that's 150 tooth uh, eight millimeter pitch that they sort of wedged together in the center there's this interesting bottom bracket system I run. Uh, the crank's built in, moulded in there, there's the pedal simply screws in there and there's a stainless steel crank moulded into the carbon fibre so that's all, all in one go. And you see the teeth are much smaller than a regular bicycle, this is 8mm pitch engineering chain made by Reynolds in Germany of course as all good Reynolds products are these days apparently uh, and it's wonderful it's proper chain bicycle chain isn't proper chain anymore sadly yeah. it's got a split in the links and it's not very efficient uh, but this is lovely stuff whatever so and that was just laser cut the chain ring mm. 25 quids worth just local oh. laser cutter so that will be go on for the for the, the pure speed attempt uh, and in which the rider is allowed to push start when that's on because it's a very big kit to get yes yeah 150 back to 15 tooth is very very big uh, with this i have to st start the, for the hour record you're not allowed to push because okay. it's within yeah. that period of time of course so you, yeah. start, so you have to start really quite slowly and get rumble away whatever with the, the little wheel uh, down the side there is the landing gear of course and once you're up to speed which is about 10 mile an hour you flick a little lever inside here and you that on that happens, and you're going, you yeah, aerodynamics, and you need to remember to put it back down again, <laughs> <laughs> which on my early test runs I very nearly forgot, <laughs> only the last one, the wheel dropped it down, whatever sort of thing, so um, that's, that gets you up and down. I mean, earlier uh, off camera we were talking about with the rear wheel that uh, one or two competitors have been looking at potentially having a sort of shell around the, yep. the wheel inside yep. there's, there's, the there's, there's, there's an aerodynamic theory that I really don't understand and my, my partner Glenn thankfully doesn't believe it either there's front and back as well that even when this is disc over this will be a disc wheel for the final disc fabric glued on works fine even that spinning disc the friction of that rotation obviously is attempting to slow you down even though it's inside the fairing it's still moving within the air is reduced if it's inside a box inside the fairing you know some 10 millimeters distant now to me that doesn't scan at all I, I, I don't understand it but it's just that really quite clever people <laughs> 
think it does so I, I can't dismiss it out of hand but it's an awful lot of work to actually make them up for, especially the front one which steers as well of course whatever sort of thing and if I look at the compromises that other designs have had to make to make it work I've an idea it's maybe not worth it I mean not everyone has done it you know some of the top machines have but so for now Glenn and I are running with this but the whole point of this project really is is, is not so much about us it's about London South Bank taking it on. This is the starting point. The yep. idea is we recorded, the, the, you saw the spots on the chassis, that's computer scanned in. So the students at the college, hopefully, like the Delft University and Liverpool University, will carry the project on and they will do the serious research in the future and improve on the shape and, and the mechanics and everything, yeah. as it were. And maybe if they find a reason to put the wheels in a box, they, they will. Yeah, the wheels in a box. Yeah. And uh, um, still to have a further lid on the back, isn't it? Oh, yeah, this, 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 is, this is just the way I get in and out, or will yeah. be with a couple of lovely assistants. It's, it, you can't just jump in it. Yeah. You know, shopping, I'm afraid. <laughs> sort of thing. Uh, but no, that's, that's being moulded as we speak, whatever. That, that aerodynamically, this is, I think, got five times the drag that it will eventually have with that just open back there. It just yeah. destroys everything, of course. And it is very much built for performance. I mean, uh, so people watching on, on the video will notice the handlebars are currently. Uh, hanging down yeah yes, yes, so get in so you, get in out, out, you have to yeah. have the handlebars plugged is, into to steer yeah, but very getting past the handlebars was a real problem so I decided to make them demountable so if you they sit loosely there until you unhook them from their little sky hook here off the cable and then they will plug in the top there and they'll clamp in place so you've got your steering we just say it's, it's very simple, just move the wheel backwards and forwards on one side. And again, it's just, if you read books on cycling, they obsess with geometry on bicycles. And I worked out long ago that it's, no, forget it, it's all nonsense or whatever. The reason bicycle head angles are what they are is because so we can fit bicycles. It's nothing to do with the steering. The, the best angle has always been vertical on, on, on a two-wheeler or whatever. It's just you can't reach the handlebars. So yeah. so, and you've got a bigger frame. And you've, you've done the first test ride and uh, you were pleasantly surprised at how it, it went in terms it of... Was, it was, yes, I mean, it wasn't nice. I, I, it was only afterwards I realised it's the first time I'd ever ridden a fared bicycle. I mean, I grew up with the fared three wheel as a speed is, and that was fine, and I, I raced recumbent bikes, but not with fairings. It changes everything. Yeah. You know, all this extra weight, and it's not absolutely rigid, so when you do your little steering corrections, that extra weight kicks in. Uh, and I spent several runs up and down the runway you're acclimatising and finally got it up to over 30 mile an hour. And what was nice it got the faster you went the better it got which a bicycle tends to do anyway so I yeah. got up the 33 34 mile an hour and had quite a short run up and that was starting to feel a lot more stable but the, the next phase is to maybe get a few miles in as it were sort of thing so I'm, I'm happy and this was a nice still day and no problems whatever but get a bit more happy a bit because once the lid goes on then the, the speed really does start going up yeah even on the, we've got a mile and a half runway to get up to speed on that. Obviously, we'll give it when you maximum on that, but uh, it'll go a lot faster than I'm used to travelling, whatever sort of thing. And we'll yeah. get sort of want to be relaxed, as it were, sort of thing, and uh, yeah. get used to it. So, so yeah, so step by step, nothing's rubbing, nothing, nothing's whirring. The, the, the uh, and you mentioned earlier to me um, that the some people might have been concerned for example that you can see the uh, screws are here and there's maybe little gaps in the oh, in yeah, here but actually that's not a problem is it the, the, well this isn't the final screen this is a little bit of lumps <coughs> and bumps there but basically the, there's this famous laminar flow now this surface is smooth enough to have laminar flow uh, and it's getting bigger as long as object has to be getting bigger and it's, yeah. not, and it's not rough you, you will get this laminar flow but little edges like that nominally are enough to trip laminar flow but only if it's back here where it's not getting bigger that quickly at the front it's getting bigger quite quickly so what they call the pressure gradient the, the, the change in shape is sufficient that even if that trips into turbulent it will then reform into laminar flow if you look up the yep. Herner, they, they quote the, the leading edge of an aeroplane wing even behind the propeller it loses laminar eventually but it starts off you know even behind the, the, the chopped up air of the propeller whatever isn't enough to destroy it you know, as long as the thing is getting bigger, but as soon as you get near to parallel, but obviously we, we, we'll, we'll feel in little bits, obviously yeah. we'll go around when it's finally set up, tweak everything, whatever sort of thing. But, but once you're back here to the lid at the back, no, the laminar is long gone. Interestingly, and this is something I only tweaked relatively late on, even though you haven't got laminar, you still want shiny because it's not like the back of the golf ball. The, the air hasn't broken away in a great big swirl. It, it's still clinging onto this, this shape. It is flowing off. The boundary layer's got deeper, so you, you've got this little tiny swirl within the boundary layer, and that's getting thicker. But it's still rubbing over the surface. And it's, in fact, it's, a, it's 
you might argue it needs to be even better surface to, to not create friction because the air that's flowing over it is, is moving at different speeds because of the vortex. So we still want a nice smooth surface back there, but, but the laminar flow, in theory, laminar skin friction is one seventh of turbulent skin friction. And as skin friction is the bulk of the drag, in theory, if this was all laminar, it would have seven times less drag than all turbulent. Now, this is very much theoretical, and the real world, I'm not sure it's quite like that, but, ever, but you know, we all want laminar flow on, on these. The world of mainstream cycling, no, you don't you forget laminar sure. flow, your, your form drag is the, the swirly bit off the back is the problem. With this, it, it's about how much laminar you can have. And the other thing was relatively unusual these days in, in having a screen. A lot of the, the modern machines have video. Yeah, vision. So they have a little camera stuck up at the back, and they're they're riding to a screen, and that again is just a bit iffy. Yeah, it's it's not that nice, as it were, sort of thing. You know, the 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 way you ride a bicycle is it is not that intuitive, yeah. whatever. So, and mostly they have to have it because they haven't got the air simple transmission. They've got loads of gears sort of in their line of sight, which I haven't got here. We've got a reasonable vision out the front, so yeah. that's, that's yeah. we're hoping will give us another little edge. And it, it's. Talking about the sort of the, 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 the marginal gains that British Cycling were on, yeah, we, we're into that area now with this, of course. Obviously, we, we, there's no way you can have a big jump over what's out there because what's out there is nearly perfect, sort of yeah. thing, by definition, at this level, sort of thing. And uh, other than the tyres, uh, which is out of our hands, but tyre manufacturers, I'm convinced, could, could give us, you know, if they were interested, something that's a lot, lot better, and that's become a major problem. But yeah. we will see. But you know, end of the year, you can come and interview us again. Yeah, <laughs> I might or might not be a British <laughs> record holder. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. Uh, thank you very much for talking us through this, and I hope it goes well, and we get uh, the right sort of rider for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this is it. Yeah, that, that's the next step. And, and again, we're best of luck with the, with the magazine as well. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> see it come out there.